next episode. For this lesson, we'll be continuing on with the techniques and application for definite integration. For this lesson of definite integration, and we have this example, which is double integration x squared plus y squared is smaller or equal to 1, bracket x squared plus y squared, and square root 4x squared plus 4y squared plus 1 dx dy. So first, what is our, our model for this question? So over here, it will be... And then we'll have our circle with the radius of 1. So this is 1, 1, negative 1, and negative 1. So, so over here, the area bounded is basically within the circle. Okay, so for this part, what we're going to have will be... So we, can, so we are going to change this to polar coordinates. So when it's in polar coordinates, it will be 0 to 1, and then here you have your 0 to 2 pi. So this pi you have, so apparently when you change to polar coordinates, x, x is equals to r cosine theta, while y is equals to r sine theta, okay? Well, for this part, you also have this. You also do the same thing. So with this, you're going to have. So apparently, this part you have your cosine square theta plus sine square theta. How uh, which is equals to uh, r1. So here you're going to be r squared and another r at the back behind part. So it's going to be r cubed. And you're going to have 4r squared because that this part once again you have your sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta plus 1. And then for this part, the r. Well, on the other hand, the theta, you can pretty much, so you can already integrate it already, so it'll be like this. Okay, so this is what you're going to get for the theta integration. Well, for this part over here, the theta will be equal to 2 pi, while the 0, you can ignore it because it will just be 0. Well, for the 2 pi, for this power you're going to have will be... Now, so right now, apparently, it may seem like you cannot solve it anymore and all. Well, apparently, you can solve it by using in trigonomic substitution, which is, which will let r be equals to a tangent, but how much tangent? So, you're going to be a half tangent 5. So over here, you are going to differentiate on both sides to, to find your dr, and you're going to get a half secant square phi d phi. And if you're wondering how I'm supposed to find the uh, 
boundary for phi. Well, for this part, you can have move this over here, so it become inverse tangent to r. So the boundaries for phi will be so if you sub in zero inside, you're going to have zero. Oh, and if you sub in one inside, you're going to get. But if you sub in one inside, this two, so in so ten, you just stay as tangent inverse tangent two. Okay. So now you can substitute inside, and you're going to get from zero to inverse tangent two. Well, for this part over here, you're going to get how. So apparently over here, this part is, so this part has, give me a sec. So this part will over 8 already because of this R cube. Cube 5. And then here we'll also have this part which will end up with tangent square have 5 plus 1. Well, for this part, the dr I will add on with another half. So for this part, have the the one over eight over here. You're going to have another one and become over sixteen instead. And then here, and then for this part, you can simplify it and you'll get one pi over eight. So for this part, now that you have gotten this part, what is 1 plus tangent square phi? So apparently 1 plus tangent square phi is basically here secant phi, secant square phi, but since it's a square root, so it just becomes secant, and here you have tangent cube phi times secant cube phi d phi. And it will be equals to so for this part you can and use so you can separate both of them to the sines and cosines and you'll get sine cube phi over cosine to the power of six phi d phi. So right now what you can do is put one of the signs over here, but for the other power we are going to use is the sine square theta plus cosine square theta is equals to 1 and we will get so sine square theta will be equals to so first of all when you put one of this inside it's going to become a negative cosine then after that for this part you will have your sine square phi which you are going to end up with 1 minus cosine square phi over cosine to the power of 6, phi, d, cosine, phi. So now that you have gotten this part, you can partial fraction into two parts. And for, the and for these two parts, you're going to get this. The first part is going to be over cosine to the power of 6, phi. So apparently over here is basically something like I go 1 minus x squared over x to the power of 6 dx because uh, these parts are the same. The only time it will be different is when we substitute the boundary inside. So for this part, what we're going to have here will be well, there are two negatives, one from here and one from this part, so we're going to end up with a positive. And for this part, the two of the cosines will simplify with each other and you'll end up with it's a over cosine to the power of 4. Now that we have gotten this part, we can integrate and for both of these terms. So when you integrate for this term, you're going to get and so this part when you integrate is going to have a, a one over negative one over five, which is going to end up with a pi over forty. And then here you have a one over cosine five five zero to two 
tangent inverse 2 plus pi over 8, whereas over here for this part, they're going to be a negative 3, 1 over 3, so they're going to be minus pi over 24, and then after that over here for this part, you're going to have cosine 5 to the power of 3, and then ten inverse tangent 2. Okay, now for this part, what you can get over here is, so as you can see, in if you want to find, so as you can see for this part, tangent, so tangent is oppo over uh, adjacent, which shows that the oppo is basically 2 and the adjacent is 1. So cosine will be here adjacent over hypo, whereas the hypo will be square root 5 if you use the Pythagoras theorem, which is going to be square root 4 plus 1, and the 4 is basically 2 square. So for this part, what you're going to get is, so it's going to be pi 5 to the power of 5 over 2 over 40 minus pi to the times 5 to the power of 3 over 2 over 24. Which is, whereas if you sub 0 in, you're going to get 1. So you're going to have minus plus pi over 40. And then you're going to plus pi over 24, which you're going to get. So for this part, apparently you can simplify pi of 5 from home. this part hard because uh, this is basically 5 times 8 so here when you simplify you're just going to end up with for 3 over 2 so now for this part if you minus these two what you're going to get is so 3 is so since the rest are the same so this is basically 2 so the denominator 24 above we have 2 times pi times pi 5 to the power of 3 over 2 and then after that we are going to have we are going to minus this, this part which is actually plus because this will be positive so over here for this power you have over here is basically here 8 times 5 and 8 times 3 so 8 times 5 and 8 times 3 over here you are just going to have a like this okay so over here 8 times 5 8 times 3 here and all those okay so for this part when you simplify you're going to get 5 square root 5 pi over 12 plus pi over 60 and that will be the result we get last but not least is over here for this. So what we mainly use for this lesson is the uh, trigonomic substitution for tangent, and then after that we he use the uh, tangent square plus one, which is secant square, and then we also use the uh, sine square theta plus cosine square theta on different occasions like this part and this part. Okay. So that'll be all for this lesson, so just one click look. Last but not least, thank you for your watching.